Well, good morning. It is about 8 a.m. We got a bit of a late start this morning because it was such a cool night that I slept right through the sunrise. Normally, as that sun comes up, the alu calf heats up and, you know, you just wake up because it gets so warm. But because of the cooler temperatures, I was able to sleep in a little bit and I'm not complaining about that. But we've got a big day today. Right now we're in Bahia de Los Angeles and my goal is to make it about three hours north of here to Puerto Citos, just south of San Felipe. But we're not gonna take the highway all the way to get there. Instead, you know, where we're at in Bahia de Los Angeles, we had to come off of the main highway one and bring highway 12 over here. We need to go back to highway one. So we could take highway 12 straight back or we can take an off-road route from here in Bahia de Los Angeles back over to El Rosarito and then pick up the Highway 1 from there and go all the way to Puerto Citos. So I think that is going to be our plan because to be quite honest with you, Highway 12 on the way over here almost felt like an off-road route by itself. There were so many potholes, the road was in such a state of disrepair that it was slow going. So I'm figuring that it's early enough in the morning. Yeah, we have to backtrack a little bit. Uh, the 12 splits off from the one north of El Rosarito. So we're gonna backtrack a little bit with this off-road route all the way down to El Rosarito. But then from there on Highway 1, it's only about two and a half hours to Puerto Citos. Well, we got gas. This Pemex here in Bahia de Los Angeles is my very first self-service gas station in all of Baja. And more importantly than gas, we got breakfast. This is a salchicha y papas burrito, a potato and hot dog basically. And uh, it's gonna be good. So now it's time to hit the road, find the turnoff for this dirt track and see what we can get up to. Well, we have officially hit dirt. I just aired down to about 20 PSI because it looks like the first stretch of this is a pretty deep sandy wash. So I don't really have any idea what to expect with this trail, which just means we get to find out together. Let's hit it.
Well, we're about a quarter of the way into this trail and so far it has been pretty fun. The scenery is absolutely beautiful and the trail itself has been a mix of sandy washes, some small rock gardens here and there, a couple of hill climbs, a couple off camber sections, and a couple of nice uh, flat out dirt roads that aren't even washboarded at all. So it's been a pretty fun mix of off-road driving and I'm just excited to continue to see how the scenery changes and what else we find along this trail. Sí. Okay, el, el ¿cómo? Sí. Poppy. Sí. Poppy. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey, sweet puppy. Oh. oh, you are so sweet. Chihuahua. Uh, no, so, no, 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 too, too big. <laughs> no, baby. Well, I went a little out of my way here to make it to this historic mission behind me and the family that is helping to restore it lives on the property and they are the caretakers out here absolutely in the middle of nowhere and they are the nicest people I've ever met. They opened it up for me, gave me a full tour. Uh, these stones were moved down from the mountains in the area, hand carved and they're massive. It's just hard to imagine that in the 16, 1700s, this level of stonework, of masonry, of, of really artistic, sculptural abilities, it's just hard to imagine that any of this was possible and that it's still standing here for us to visit today. And the restoration is ongoing and they're doing a fantastic job. So if you're in the area, if you come to Baja, one of the coolest things to do is check out all of the history. There's so much in these parts to you'll just stumble upon. I didn't even realize that this was on the track, but then I saw a sign for it. It was a few kilometers in the opposite direction, and I went for it, and I'm so glad I did. Well, we have made it to the outskirts of El Rosarito and we are airing back up the tires now because we're gonna take some pavement to get up to Puertecitos. 
and find camp up there tonight. That was an incredible off-road track. It had everything you wanted. It had all of the different terrain features, the sandy washes, the little bouldery rock garden sections. It was a lot of fun without putting yourself in danger. So perfect kind of trail to run if you're down here by yourself and you wanna see a cool mission, read up on some of the history, meet some incredible local people on the way. Bahia de Los Angeles to El Rosarito via the dirt so much fun. I'm hoping here in El Rosarito we'll be able to find some lunch, a cafe or a loncheria for some burritos de machaca or whatever we can find, but we'll keep our eyes posted. At the mission he was telling me something about a procession and this is where I have to apologize because my Spanish comprehension is un poquito. I I, I can get by and I do get by and I'm getting better every single day down here and it's one of my goals on this trip is to get really conversationally fluent in Spanish but sometimes when they're talking at you really fast and it's just it's hard to understand and comprehend every single word but he's telling me about a procession that I think happened in October of 2010 I think it was 10 10 10 where they followed this string of missions carrying some sort of almost like an altar piece from Guerrero Negro all the way to Bahia de Los Angeles. And that meant, you know, this, this procession of people were walking these dirt trails. And it, it blows my mind because driving it was a little bit difficult. Walking it is hard to even imagine. But there, it's just cool to, to see this kind of history, see the respect and the restoration that is going into preserving the history and hearing some of these stories, whether or not I understood it correctly. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know if you actually know about what I'm talking about. But it was a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. All right, we've secured the bag right here from this awesome little restaurant on the outskirts of El Rosarito, burritos de machaca, 30 pesos each. Let's see how they look. Oh yeah, that is what we're after. Beautiful tortilla stuffed full of this incredible machaca. It's really good stuff. Well, with burritos in hand, it is time to head north. We're making tracks on the highway towards Puerto Citos, where we're gonna find camp for tonight. One last beach camp. This is where it starts to get sad. We've got one last beach camp before we cross back over the border and are back in the States. It's just a harsh reality. It has to end at some point, but we're gonna make the most of it. Well, we made it to our beach camp in Puertecitos. This is Octavia's camp. We've got some palapas right here. We've got the place all to ourselves right now. I'm not totally sure where I'm gonna set up. The only trouble here is that there are some hills. The palapas are so close together that you can't squeeze between them like some of the other beach camps with palapas. But for the time being, I'm parked right here we'll figure something out before we get set up. Now, if I'm being honest, especially for the price here at Octavio's camp, I think there are probably better places to stay. Between San Felipe and Puerto Citos, there are so many options. 
this one just happens to hold a special place in my heart because it's the first camp that my girlfriend and I stayed at when we started this trip three weeks ago. And you know that feeling when you're starting a trip and you're not sure what you're going to get into, you don't know how it's going to go yet, you're full of excitement and a little bit of trepidation. We pulled up to Octavio's camp, we were just done with driving for the day and dealing with the border crossing and really just had a great experience here. The water was awesome. It was our first time jumping in the Sea of Cortez. And we spent the better part of the afternoon and the next morning just hanging out here and having a great time. And so for those reasons, I chose to come back here and spend my last beach camp on the trip right back where we started it. However, the cleanliness, the facilities available, he's charging 500 pesos a night, which is more than double any other advertised camp prices I've seen. Probably a three out of five star camp. But the memories and the experience that we had here when we were starting this trip makes it five out of five stars. Tell me how that works. I don't know. But we're here. We've got a couple solid hours of daylight left and I'm gonna get back in the water and I'm gonna enjoy it one last time. The sun is setting behind me. I've got this beautiful ocean view in front of me and this beach all to myself. I'm gonna enjoy my last night of beach camping here and set the camera down for a little bit, drink a Pacifico, get some dinner going. Now, I'm not usually someone to be up in time for sunrise. I think you guys know that about me. But there is something really special about being up at this hour. And for whatever reason, on this trip down here to Baja, it's been natural almost to wake up with the sunrise. I'm not setting alarms. I'm not consciously making an effort to try to get up at sunrise. I do think that some of it stems from the fact that Early in this trip, it was just so dang hot as the sun came up that you were forced to wake up and get out of bed and get driving quickly so that you could get that airflow and, and stay a little bit cool. But now it's a beautiful, cool morning. I think it's like 67, 68 degrees this morning. And we're just taking in one last sunrise here. Well, we've got a big day today. Not only are we gonna to try to cross the border today, I'm gonna to try to make it to my folks' place in Arizona for my mom's birthday. But let's get packed up and hit the road here and make the most of our daylight hours. Well, we are officially back in the US now. We just crossed the border and, you know, one thing that's been true this whole trip, whether it was a military checkpoint in Baja, the border crossings we did, even the gas stations, the troopy brings lots of smiles and lots of questions to everyone who sees it. I get a lot of folks telling me that it's a crazy build. They look inside and they're like, what the heck is all of this? And I explain what I'm doing and it's a lot of fun. And the same was true with this uh, US border crossing. The, the customs agent, I think, uh, had a few more questions than he actually asked me, but uh, all was well. But now that we're back on US soil, it is time to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for coming along on this shakedown trip to Baja. I had a ton of fun and I hope you did as well. If you like what I'm doing, it is a huge help to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm still trying to hit that goal of 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I can't do it without your help. Until next time, get out and explore somewhere.